What's up, guys? Just getting some samples ready for my upcoming Kentucky trip. Hope you enjoyed today's video. Just a quick reminder that it is brought to you by the Scratch Malt Whiskey Society. And uh, if you click the link below and you sign up, you join the society, which you probably should do if you like scotch anyway, or if you're scotch curious, um, you get a $50 gift card from them. Just put Drew P. Whiskey in the order notes or Drew P. Sent Me, something like that. Just make sure it shows up, Drew P. Something, and they're going to send you a $50 gift card to use on your first order or your next order. So it's pretty cool. Now enjoy the video. Scotland. Neat Nation, what's up? Stoked about this. I've been wanting to make this video for a long time. And it's about scotch. It's my second scotch video in the last few weeks. That's because scotch is awesome and it's delicious. Today we want I want to really get into the reason why I didn't leave scotch. We have we still have a relationship. Maybe we're not as intimate as we once were. I'm still definitely on speaking terms and even have a romantic tryst from time to time if you want to get explicit with it. If you follow my channel at any length, you know that when I fell in love with whiskey in general, it was through the, the, the loins of scotch. That's how I became a little bit, uh, I, I became allured by the aging process, putting spirit in barrels, and I really dug some single malts. I loved it. Well, I still love it. Probably will love it in the future. I'm a big Scotch fan. That said, there are reasons why what you see on my shelf is mostly bourbon. Part of that's due to actually my naivete about Scotch. I never went as hard in learning about Scotch as I did in American whiskey. But there were some barriers that were sort of in my way. Things that made it a little bit harder to love Scotch, and to the extent which I do bourbon, a little bit easier to love bourbon. So that's what we're going to talk about initially here is what's the problem with scotch and we're going to talk about um, the fact that those things don't have to be problems or the problem with scotch and that's thanks to our partner scotch malt whiskey society yep i've got a partner for today's video as you can tell by my very conveniently and well-placed products here and i'm jacked to be able to do this video with the scotch malt whiskey society because in my opinion they get scotch right we're going to talk about that in just a second. For now, let's talk about what I saw as the problem with scotch. It's kind of several things. We'll start with the fact that when you fall in love with a particular distillery, let's say Oban, because you know that I love Oban if you watch my videos. Big fan of Oban single malt scotch, 14, 18, even their Little Bay release. Big fan. That said, uh, there's only one other stand semi-standard release, and that's the Distiller's Edition from Oban. So you have four sort of normal releases, and once you've tasted through them, what's, what's next? Nothing. Nothing's next. Unless you go and get some super rare, ultra-limited releases that are north of 20 years old and cost north of $1,000. That's kind of the norm with scotch is that there's not a lot of limited releases from most distilleries there are a few particularly ardbeg that has been dropping a few experimental releases every year that's pretty cool good on ardbeg but that's far from the norm when it comes to scotch whiskey bourbon on the other hand you know most distilleries release multiple special releases every year and they don't cost a thousand dollars you know and most they might cost 300 msrp most are you know from the $60 range up to $200 range so relative to a scotch limited release fairly affordable another problem with scotch is there's no such thing as a barrel pick that's another way you can experience a distillery more deeply in american whiskey is you can buy a store pick single barrel from most distilleries at really reasonable price points you can't do that with scotch there are some independent bottlers like murray and Scotch Malt Whiskey Society, which we're going to talk about in a little bit. But by and large, you know, you don't have stores that are able to call up a distillery and be like, hey, we'd like to buy a whole barrel and release it in our store, at least not in the United States. Can't do it. So that leaves you kind of in the lurch. If you've tasted the standard Oban offerings that exist from 40 to 46% alcohol by volume, you want to experience more Oban? Well, you are SOL. 
Limited releases are few and far between and soups expensive. Single barrel products are non-existent. Here's the other thing about scotch is what I just said about proof. Most scotches on a shelf are 40 to 46% alcohol by volume, which is fine, but it's light. It lacks an intensity. There's not a depth there that can come with a cask strength spirit. A lot of scotch distilleries don't release anything at cask strength. Like Glenn Livett's cask strength releases, the Naduras, I think it's been a long time since they released one in that line. Those were awesome. They stopped doing it. It's like, come on, man, get it together. It's what I loved. Those were actually uh, at an accessible price point, too. Good on Glenn Livett for the Nadura products that I can't get anymore. Most scotch, you bite off the shelf and it's pre-diluted. And you're not getting close to tasting what it was like coming out of the barrel. Which is fine-ish, but it's kind of a bummer if you're a whiskey geek and you want to know what cask strength Oban tastes like. Um, just, you don't have that option. In American whiskey, most distilleries have a barrel strength release. That is at least relatively attainable. So you want to know what barrel strength Heaven Hill tastes like. Well, there's Elijah Craig barrel, barrel Proof. You want to know what barrel strength Jim Beam tastes like. There's both Knob Creek single barrels and there's Booker. Good on them. There's even Old Granddad 114. So all in all, assessing scotch, what you see on the shelf is kind of what you get. And once you've tasted it, that, that may be the only thing you're able to taste from that distillery for quite some time. We also don't have the transparency in scotch that we have in a lot of American whiskey. Scotch, you can add flavoring to it. You don't know necessarily what all casks went into a particular bottling. It just gets released with an age statement and you don't know what flavor influences are in it. In American whiskey, most of that is disclosed right on the bottle. Aged in this kind of cask for this amount of time. It's just kind of the way we do it. Mainly that's the result of the fact that bourbon is so highly regulated and the fact that um, the distilleries clued in that we wanted that. We liked transparency. So tell us what's in the bottle. Scotch has not uh, gotten the hint by and large. So given the things that I like, it was easy for me to fall in love with bourbon. I was able to have the depth of flavor from the cast strength product. I was able to taste single barrels from the distilleries that I liked. I knew what was going into the bottle, even if it was an aged product, and price points on even the limited releases were relatively attainable. Lots and lots of exploration out there in American whiskey. Now in Scotch, granted there are a ton of products. There's a lot of distilleries, a lot. That said, there's not always a lot at my fingertips here in the United States. It's kind of a bummer. Also, when you go to bars, they don't tend to have massive scotch selection. So if I wanted to branch out and explore, it becomes difficult because I have no idea what the product tastes like until I buy a whole bottle. Because, again, we don't know what flavoring, which flavoring is a bad word, but finishes impacting the flavor of the scotch are applied before it's bottled. So that's generally the problem. It's my big issue. Now, if I was to establish a business plan to try and, like, leverage what I wanted out of scotch. It would look a lot like the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society. In fact, I wish I owned stock in the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society because they just get it right. I mean, everything that I was like iffy on scotch about, everything that drove me into the arms of another lover, bourbon, um, has been resolved. Is like uh, Scotch Malt Whiskey Society took scotch through marital counseling and it arrived at... Um, what did bliss? It fixed the problems. Conflict resolution was achieved. How, might you ask? Well, I'm going to tell you. First thing about Scotch Malt Whiskey Society and their scotches. We're going to get into the logistics here in a minute. But the scotches from Scotch Malt Whiskey Society, they're single barrels. Every dang one of them comes as a single barrel. Each one is a code right here that tells us what the distillery is and what bottle from the distillery it is that Scotch Malt Whiskey Society has purchased from that particular distillery. Now, if you look at this label closely, you'll notice that it doesn't say the distillery on the label. And you're like, oh, well, I wish they'd be more transparent. Actually, they are transparent because 
this code, 53, applies to, as I said, a certain distillery that they do disclose and you can find on their website as a society member. What I like about the fact that they don't put the particular distillery on the label is it leaves you with no preconceptions. If it said Lagavulin, delicious or earthly smoke, 10 year old, I'm thinking about, okay, it's 10 year Lagavulin, it might taste similar to the eight year Lagavulin or the 12 year cask strength. If I don't know that it's Lagavulin, this one's actually not Lagavulin, then it's gonna, you know, like leave me open to just take it at, on its own terms. like. What is this whiskey? How good is it? I don't care what distillery it is initially until I taste it, go back later and be like, oh, dang, that's different than what I had from X or Y or Z distillery. So single barrels, that's pretty cool. Second thing Scotch Malt Whiskey Society has going for it. They're all cask strength. Cask strength Scotch, yo. It just doesn't get much better than that. I mean, of course, it, this isn't a contest with bourbon. We're learning together to hopefully make the global whiskey community better. But cask strength scotches, this one, a 57.7% alcohol by volume 10 year old Islay whiskey, repeated whiskey, which this one is from Islay, that's found fantastic. We're big fans of that. Love it. Here's a 14 year old uh, Space Eyed whiskey, finished in bourbon and um, sherry casks, bourbon first, then sherry. 63.2% alcohol by volume, 14 year old. That's fantastic. I love that they put that on there. I love that they let you decide how much water you want to put in it. You can dial in your whiskey. That's a, a whiskey geek's dream. You become the blender. You become the diluter to find what you want. That's a major win. Another thing that Scotch Malt Whiskey Society has going for it is what I just mentioned about bourbon and sherry casks is it tells you on the bottle what was this aged in for instance this 10 year old Islay was aged in refill ex bourbon hogshead meaning that the barrel had been used to age scotch after it had been used to age bourbon and then it was refilled again and this whiskey sat in there for 10 years and then was bottled let's take this 24 year old space side whiskey this was first fill ex bourbon barrel, meaning that it held bourbon and then this whiskey went into it after that for 24 years and then it was bottled. Hey, that's pretty cool. And let's revisit this guy, this space side that was aged in a bourbon cask initially. Then it went into a sherry cask, a second fill sherry cask, which means that there was a sherry cask that then was filled with scotch and then dumped and then refilled with this bottle. For some sherry finishing so not a sherry bomb here certainly influenced by the sherry but we're not like overcome with it yeah the sherry's there for sure but not at the presence of like the glenlivet nadura oloroso aged which was a sherry bomb that thing was fruity orangey cinnamon rolly this one is much more subtle but still amazing so we've got transparency we got cask strength we're loving that we got single barrels that's a win, win, win. Like if you're a Scotch geek, the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society is just doing it right. They won. They won Scotch. Now they are a society. And what a society means, I mean, we're not talking about eyes wide shut type stuff here. I mean, I don't know what happens behind closed doors in Scotland where they do their barrel picking. Now, all these bottles get selected in Scotland by their tasting panel. They're just tasting through single barrels that they can purchase and they buy the ones they want to buy. They've got a, a warehouse chock full of barrels that are all still aging. And then when they're ready to go, they are going to cask them when they feel or bottle them when they feel like they're ready to be bottled. That's like the most baller move that they're holding all these barrels and bottling them kind of whenever the heck they want. And then their tasting panel ultimately is going to name them based on what they taste like. So here's another win is it's taking some of the risk out of the scotch buying experience is you can look at the name of a bottle and kind of infer the experience for this one this peated whiskey it's called delicious earthy smoke what do you think it's going to taste like yeah it's probably going to be earthy and smoky and then they give you some really really dank tasting notes that help you kind of dial in to exactly what are we talking about here well for this peated whiskey um peat smoke through vanilla 
bacon and oak, which, yeah, I mean, bacon, I get a lot in peated whiskeys. Heather Moorburn, peppered steak, and aromatic duck. Pair that one with a smoked dinner and a cigar. Let's go. This one called Fruits of Our Labors. It's probably going to be a fruity whiskey, which makes sense because it's sherry finished. We baked a pear, blackberry, and coconut cake before eating cranberry chutney, crackers, and washing it down with heather-infused drink. Uh, that sounds great. Um, and it is great. It's delicious. So they take a lot of time in the naming of these whiskeys and then the description of them to try and make, again, the buying process easier for you because, you know, you ultimately have to order them online. That's kind of their deal. But another thing they provide to try and make the Scotch whiskey buying experience even more engaging and uh, risk-free, I guess, is they label, this is, we're going to talk about this in just a second. They label all their whiskeys based on this breakdown of flavors that they have, ranging from heavily peated to spicy and dry, to light and, from light and delicate to spicy and sweet, all based on color. So if you're on the website and you see something in a deep purple, you're going, oh, that one's got to be spicy and sweet. And then they give a whole bunch of tasting notes here. So not only do they help you dial in the flavors, if you're not an experienced taster, they're going to help you... Uh, Get in the ballpark. In coffee, we have something called the flavor wheel. This is more like a flavor timeline. Works the same. You go, I know I'm in the sweet department, so I'm looking for the sweet department and be like, yeah, tastes kind of more like balsamic strawberries and less like garam masala. So let's go with that. Let's say it tastes like strawberries. That's all tasting is, is trying to pick the closest thing, the most reminiscent uh, food product or not food in some cases that is uh, in your brain hole. So big win uh, from an educational experience and from a shopping experience in the way that Scotch Malt Whiskey Society has coded their products from a flavor standpoint. Now how are they able to accomplish all this? Well they are a society meaning that you have to be a member to get access to the bottles. You just gotta pay them some money. It's a reasonable price. It's a hundred bucks to join the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society. That's really reasonable. Like we've paid a lot more for a lot less as American whiskey geeks. And signing up is super simple. Look at the screen here. You just go, scroll, hit that join button, scroll down, and you join. Or another thing you can do is when you join, you can get a sampler. You would click this button, and you would get one of these guys, which came with this awesome flavor breakdown, like I showed you. And it comes with 300 milliliter bottles of whiskey to get you started. If you're new to scotch, this is a delightful way to get acquainted with it. You get the flavor breakdown, and then you get kind of the scotch flavor spectrum. Here we have a peated whiskey. We've got something that's supposed to be young and sprightly, and then we've got a spicy and sweet whiskey as well. It's probably got some sherry influence involved in it. And you can look up all of these whiskeys on their website to get all of the specs about what casks they were aged in, what distilleries they came from, etc., etc. So you get to try three Scotch whiskeys. This is a great tasting kit too if you just want to make a night of it. You get a dank little tasting journal. This comes out. You can use that. I'm gonna use that. I'm taking this on my Kentucky trip, even though it says Scotch. I don't feel like that's cheating. And then to make it super worth your money, you get a really rad tasting set. So, uh, nice water pitcher, little water doohickey to use uh, for dilution, and then two really super classy stemmed glassware thingies like I have right here. I would highly recommend you get one of the tasting kits. That's another hundred bucks, but if you join the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society, whether or not you get this kit, if you, in the special order instructions, not in the coupon code, but the special order instructions, just put Drew P. Whiskey or Drew P. Whiskey sent me, um, they're going to give you a $50 gift card to use on your next purchase. So maybe you just join up, wait till you get that $50 gift card, then buy one of these guys. Or get these with your first order, then use a $50 gift card to get a rad full bottle because you're going to find something that you love. Scotch Malt Whiskey Society is authentically dope. Um, I have turned down sponsorship options from other companies um, because I didn't like what they wanted me to sell. And I'm like, I'm not going to waste my time sharing something on my channel. Waste my time, waste your time 
for something that I think is stupid. Like, I just don't want to do that. Like, we're here to talk about whiskey, and I want to share stuff that I think is of value to you. Scotch Bond Whiskey Society, I'm 100% on board with. Like, that would be of value to you. If you like scotch at all, want to broaden your palate, this is a wonderful way of doing it. This society has got over 30,000 global members. It's been around since the 80s, I think. Just crushing it. Sourcing awesome scotches and getting them in the hands of scotch lovers, whiskey geeks in general. They're really picking up steam in the U.S. I'm on board, and I'm stoked to explore more of their options here in the future. We'll likely have uh, one of their reps on our live stream to talk more about scotch whiskey in general, if that's something you're new to. Because what we didn't do today is talk about sort of the inherent glories of scotch. We got right into the problems. We, you know, we're pushing buttons a little bit. But there is some inherent glory in scotch, for sure. And if you're not super familiar with it, well, hey, that's what this channel is for. Never stop learning. Nation, thanks for watching. Hope you dug. Be sure to check out Scotch Bunt Whiskey Society. Link is down below in the show notes. Uh, you'll be glad you did. Okay? Okay. Enjoy the rest of your day. Sip slowly. Stay healthy. Stay safe. And remember to keep it neat. Slosh.